What's going on, YouTubers? Welcome to another video. So today we're going to do a re-review of my greatest video performing-wise, Crime One Grimlock. Uh, that video got 650,000 views. I still have not reached the million mark yet, uh, but this one got 650k. My second best video was Tokyo Comic Con at nearly 400,000. Uh, you know, in this one, I was still unboxing statues in my kitchen, you know, and I got this a long time ago. I think that was eight years ago when I got this or, you know, nine years ago. You know, it was one of the first, you know, like extremely detailed statues I truly got. You know, this and of course uh, that Megatron and, you know, this Optimus and Bumblebee were some of my very first extremely detailed statues. But this Grimlock in particular was something I was extremely looking forward to. I saw it first at San Diego Comic-Con. I was watching Mad Axe Collector's video on it, this, and Bumblebee, and, and uh, those turtles as well. Because that's kind of what, like, Prime 1 came out of the gate with when they first were introduced as a company. They did the turtles, and they did, you know, Transformers. It wasn't until later on that they branched out to other IPs. First, it was really just those two IPs. Uh, but, you know, I've had this Grimlock since day one. Uh, I have had a few issues with it. I feel like, uh, I don't know if it was just like rusting or something, but something happened with his upper nostril and I kind of just like broke it off and painted over it and he can't tell anymore, which is great because I was really annoying. Also, that little Optimus is extremely fragile and just setting him up originally had multiple parts just break. Like you insert something, break, insert something, break. Uh, so that little Optimus is quite annoying. He does come with a separate base that you can like have him stand on, but I like having him ride Grimlock. I just think that looks better, you know. So yeah, this statue, uh, let's talk about it. So concept. So, you know, you got a typical Transformer styled base, you know, somewhat similar to some of the other ones in design, like, you know, kind of similar to that Bumblebee where it has those like raised parts right there you know with the transformer writing you know kind of hard to see from a distance but up close you can see it you know where it has that transformer writing uh the color looks fine and then he's running on really just like a road there is a pipe there is a light up feature that lights up the base as well as his mouth you know and then this logo uh, also comes with it and that lights up it basically shines a light uh you know, above. So, I have it lit up in a hot minute, but that one still lights up. This one, let's see if we can get this lit up. Let's see, where's that battery? And there you go. Pretty sure it goes that way. Oh, there we go. Oh, all right, there we go. Check that out. So, in the mouth, in the eyes. Item's pretty cool. It's kind of hard to see the mouth when it's down low, up high. You'd obviously see it better. And the base, I got to get really back there to, you know, get that one. It's like a button back here. Or let me see if I can find it. There you go. So, there it is. Boom. And, of course, you want to turn this back on. Although, that's kind of the general idea. I mean, that, I mean, I guess the best way to do this is to kind of have it right here, because then it can shine up on the statue like that. I mean, this light up is like, it's okay. I, I just like uh, displaying it like right there, though. So, yeah, the base, it's, it looks like a road uh, that's obviously like broken up because you have a gigantic, you know, T-Rex robot. Uh, that's running across, you know, in Transformers Age of Extinction. Now, I am a big fan of this movie. I like it for a lot of reasons. One, I like Mark Wahlberg. Uh, the main hot chick is awesome. Uh, the fighting's excellent. You know, they kind of bring back uh, Megatron with Galvatron right there. Then you have Lockdown, which is a badass villain, you know. Really epic end fight, like the Battle of Hong Kong, Optimus vs. You know, Lockdown, I really like that movie. I love the music as well and just the overall story. 
So, big fan. Uh, and I really like Grimlock, because one, I love T-Rexes. Ever since I saw Jurassic Park as a little kid, I love T-Rexes. I think they're awesome. And I love Transformers ever since I saw the first movies. So, it's natural. A Transformer T-Rex is epic, you know, and it's pretty dynamic as well. The fact he's just running on one foot, you know, running to the side Optimus. Now, I have my Optimus kind of like holding on to his horn. He doesn't have to do that. His arms are, you know, like you can move them up and down. So, yeah, uh, they're just a little bit of, you know, like movement, uh, the head, uh, that doesn't really move, but the arms move up and down, you know, and then the shield is also optional and he does have two swords. This is the one where it's like up. There's one that points forward. The one that points forward, mine is damaged from bumping into it because it makes it too deep and I broke it off probably two or three times. So I just use this one. Uh, it's less deep and, uh. Looks great. I do like the arm forward pose. I, I think it works a little bit better. You know, because he's like kind of like pointing in the direction saying, go this way, Grimlock. But again, it just makes it too deep. You know, but I do like the pose. I think the pose is great. And I like the overall concept. The base is good. It's detailed, has a cool light up feature. So overall concept, I would, I mean, and the fact you can also just take Optimus off and then have him on his own little transformer themed the base i think it's really cool i'd probably give over a concept a nine out of ten i think it's really good uh so when it comes to presence it has a pretty decent presence i mean obviously it doesn't scale good with like these transformers in that sense and they did make a more recent even smaller version of grimlock without the optimus you know and that one looks pretty cool uh again it's much smaller you know and things are generally better when they're bigger so uh, we'll go ahead and turn this light up off. No, I just don't. Because <sighs> that's how you generally look at the statue. Light ups are cool and all, but when I'm looking at the statue, this is what I'm looking at. So that's kind of like how I like to review it. Show you the light up. But again, that's not how the statue looks the majority of the time. This is how it looks. So the eyes are still red. You know, like they did make them red. You know, so the eyes look still pretty cool. Uh, the red on the base, I mean, it's a cool feature, but I don't think it actually was ever red in the movie, but it's a cool gimmick. And the mouth red is cool because he did, like, breathe fire. So, yeah, it has an okay presence. I mean, it is quite a long piece. I mean, like, it's a good-sized T-Rex. Like, it feels like a... The tail isn't as long, but it's about the size of a one-tenth scale T-Rex, I will say. Like, it's still a big piece. You know, I think it's, like... 30, maybe almost three feet deep. And what the heck? I did not tell Alexa to do it. Alexa, turn on Stature Room. A few things share the name Statue. Oh my gosh. Which one Alexa, turn on Statue Room. God, freaking Alexa. My light randomly turned off for no reason. So yeah, overall presence is pretty good. You know, like it still is a pretty good size statue, big overall base. I mean, all Transformers have pretty big bases, but for, a, you know, if you compare this to a normal statue, this is definitely the size of like two one-fourth scale statues in terms of space. You know, and it looks good both down low and up high. I would probably prefer up high, you know, but for me in my situation, uh, down low is best. But for many years, I had this up high you know, on top of a Stuva for probably seven, eight years. You know, only when I got garage shelving did I put this down low because it never fit in a Stuva down low. You know, now let's talk about uh, paint and detail because this is one of my older pieces. How does the paint and detail, you know, fare to today's standards? So he is a very, like, a green and silver rusted look throughout. You know, he was hidden in the jungle for who, know, who knows how many hundreds to potentially thousands of years. Honestly, I think this statue holds up extremely well. I think the paint and detail is 10 out of 10 still for this piece. You know, like, it still looks phenomenal. The mouth detail, the tongue, that inner part right there, you know, beneath the tongue, the teeth, look absolutely sick. 
you know, I think it's a extremely detailed piece and it not has not been outdated by any means, nor do I think it ever will become outdated. You know, they did an extremely good job. And this is one big reason Prime 1 is where it's at today because they came out of, you know, like the freaking, they just came out punching and just, you know, this, the Turtles, Megatron, which won Statue of the Year. You know, they came out with all these bangers just right out of the bat and they were just incredibly detailed, like much more detailed than Sideshow was putting out. So that's why they solidified themselves as the dominant statue company within years. So this piece definitely still holds up to today's standards and it's extremely detailed and cool. So like I said, 10 out of 10 for both paint app and overall micro detail. Now Prime 1 has gotten better over the years with their Transformers, but not by much just because they already have been so good. You know, but when I do compare, you know, like that Megatron to this one, Granted, they're different designs. So if you compare that DOTM to this one, you know, like the eyes are better. The paint app's a little bit better. You know, and a few parts are just designed a little bit differently. So it is a little bit more detailed, like maybe like 5%, but not a huge deal. It's not like, you know, going from a polystone to a silicone bus where it's just like 10x better. You know, so Grimlock still holds up. I've never seen the little one in person. I don't know how good it is. You know, I never desired to buy it. Uh, so let's talk about value. So the value on this has, of course, changed over the years. Pre-Biden era, when the economy was good, uh, you know, this thing was going for $6,000. And it retailed at 1900 plus shipping. Shipping, I think, was like... 100 bucks ships in two boxes, I think. Maybe three boxes. I think two. You know, so some, I had someone offer me $6,000 at the time, and I still said no. You know, and that's a lot of money. You know, it's dropped in half. You know, I, I think I've even seen this go as low as 2500 which is still over retail, so technically that still makes this a good investment. You know, but... It is a shame what's happened to the secondhand market, but, you know, this piece still does retain, you know, good value. Like, I haven't seen it go below 2500 and that's usually 2500 plus shipping. You know, so if you bought it for, let's say, 2100 you know, you're still making a few hundred bucks. Obviously, it's way far off from six grand, but, you know, I still think this statue holds value. I think if you could buy it for 2500 I would jump on it because it still is a fantastic piece. Just note, it does not scale with other Transformers. It's more of like a standalone piece, but it still looks cool in the setup. I still really like it. I still think it's awesome. I'd overall still give this probably like a, a 9 out of 10. You know, if they fixed Little Optimus and made him a little bit better designed and, you know, some people say he's a little small. I mean... I'd have to check the movie references, but, you know, I think Little Optimus is probably the, you know, the one thing that gets it not a perfect 10 score. But Grimlock is for is a 10. You know, you take Little Optimus out of the picture, Grimlock by himself is a 10. You know, like, he doesn't have any flaws. I wouldn't mind him bigger, though. I won't deny that. Like, he's big, but imagine if he was much bigger. You know, what if he was like the size of this entire garage shelf? That would be sick. <clears throat> you know, so that's one thing I would love to see. Don't need the little Optimus. Of course, it'd be cool with it. But imagine a Grimlock the size of this entire garage shelf where his head is right there and his tail's poking out into that shelf. That would be absolutely legendary. Overall, this is still a fantastic piece, folks. It has aged very well, and it's still, you know, like an old-school Transformers grill, in my opinion, and I love it. So if you ever have a chance to pick this up, I would recommend it. You know, I still like it much more than the newer little one. That one's just too small. You know, they should have gone bigger. Uh, but anyways, folks, hope you all enjoyed this re-review. See you guys in the next one. Uh, just to let you know as well, Dream Studios link, I just paid for shipping. It's going to be DHL shipped this upcoming week. So we might get it by the end of the month. It depends. But uh, that will be DHL shipped, so we'll have it in a few days. Like, comment, subscribe. Have a great day.